Looking for strategies to help you protect your portfolio in these uncertain times? Visit robblack.com. Robblack.com. Powered by EP Wealth. I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial, money, investing, and more. I'm very thankful to be here. Very appreciative on life and investing and what they've done for me. Very concerned about you, the living. Not so worried about those who have passed. Um, Because I think we're all in this together. It's holiday season. Let's talk markets. Let's talk that most thankful feeling. Let's talk what we can today. NVIDIA stayed true to its AI self and blew past analysts' high expectations for fiscal third quarter revenue and earnings. Just as important, NVIDIA provided fourth quarter revenue guidance well above consensus expectations, said that while U.S. export curbs to China are adversely affecting sales there, that is being more than offset by strong growth in other regions. I'm going to talk about NVIDIA a little later in the show. I own shares of NVIDIA. I think AI is driving a big chunk of tech spending. And I think it'll continue to. And I think you're going to see some new products, particularly the phone and new desktops and laptops that are more AI oriented. And I I think that means there's going to be a little bit more of a play there. We'll talk about it, though, okay? Um, We got strong guidance. Um, From NVIDIA, we did not get the strongest guidance from Autodesk or Deer or HP, Jack in the Box or Guess. Those are very different companies, right? Deer makes big equipment. I own shares of Caterpillar for the dividend. I do not own shares of Caterpillar for the growth. There will be some cycles where they grow, but that's not what I'm concerned with. Once I hit the age 50, I was like, I want to start buying some stocks that pay dividends um, and that have free cash flow, cash cows, as I will call them today. We'll talk about that as the show moves on. Bloomberg reported earlier today that Saudi Arabia has expressed dissatisfaction with other members' oil production levels. That's interesting. OPEC Plus is delaying its weekend meeting without explanation until November 30th. Oil prices are down 4% today, so that acts deflationary. The price of the pump is not inflating, it's deflating. When crude futures go lower, it's nice to see. Last week, we got deflating consumer prices. We got deflating producer prices. The story is still there for 2024 to be long the market if you believe what I'm saying. PPI, CPI lower, deflating oil prices. Taking a look at like the 10-year treasury, it's super important right now. Following it and... um where it's going to go. 4-4, four, 4-3, four, 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 When did the price cuts expectations get noted? Yesterday, the Federal Reserve released their notes from the last meeting. And inside the notes, they basically didn't talk about any potential cuts. That's a little disappointing. I'm going to go with it and say it's a little disappointing. Um, I don't have to do too much more than that, if you know what I'm saying, what I'm picking up, what I'm putting down. We're eventually going to see notes that say we may cut interest rates in 2024, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter. And when that happens, I think it'll open up our opportunity to get another leg of the bull market higher. I think 2024, I expect the Russell 2000. I expect the S&P mid cap 400. I expect international markets to all do slightly better than they did this year. I'm not talking about hugely better. Popeyes is adding chicken wings to their menu, including the popular ghost pepper flavor. Don't know about that. (laughs) Stocks are gaining today as the 10-year treasury yield falls to a two-month low heading into Thanksgiving. Again, that's part of the play for 2024. 
That's the 10 year predicting that the Fed's going to come out with a statement saying somewhere down the road, we're going to cut interest rates. And then down the road, they cut the interest rates. The 10 year is trying to say we know better than, than the Fed does. 10 year is a bond. I think the bond market's smarter than the stock market. I think the stock market looks six months in the future. I think the bond market works in real time odds. I'm giving you a <clears throat> chock full of entertaining uh, ideas today. Um, just throw that down there for you. I work hard for you guys. Um, I think that's important that we have that relationship. The initial jobless claims for the week ending November 18th decreased by 24,209,000. That is a very healthy number. Our labor market is inflating, creating inflationary pressures. So the November reports are always kind of funky because you get around the holidays. Just throw that down there for you. And that's when people tend not to go to the unemployment line. Durable good orders for October declined for 5.4% month over month, following a downwardly revised 4% increase in September. Markets closed Thursday, and they'll be open, close early on Friday. Friday being Friday being Black Friday. Let's talk a little Black Friday. I like it. For consumers, Black Friday means one thing, incredible discounts. I think you're going to see really big discounts this year in electronics. From fashion and beauty to electronics and big box retailers, nearly every category seems to go all out for the occasion. It is expected this year the average Americans will save 24% on Black Friday deals. But there will be some companies like Macy's and JCPenney's that will be offering 60% off. You heard me right, 60% off. That seems like too big of a number for a retailer to actually pull off, right? How do they make money? Um, it leaves them a smaller business, which have smaller profit margins at stake as they vie for customer attention. Retail and e-commerce analyst Morning Consult just talked about it. Small and independent retailers can't usually afford to offer steep discounts and free shipping like the big retailers can. Inflation is hitting everyone this year. My spouse put together a shopping list for um, Thanksgiving. And I was like, can't you buy some stuff at Trader Joe's and buy some stuff at Molly Stones? I get it. I get the organic celery. But $10? Holy mackerel. Um, so inflation's hitting everyone. I looked at her proposed, um, receipt. And I'm like, you need to cut a couple hundred dollars out of this one it's Thanksgiving. It's supposed to be a cheap meal, not an expensive meal. It's not going to be a Rockwell painting butterball though. The Turkey mainstay is targeting Americans. It found we're not planning to celebrate Thanksgiving Then partnering with a friend, finding app to facilitate more friends givings. That's cute, right? Um, on a year where we lost one of the friends. Oh, boy. That just hit me like a ton of bricks. Not really, but kind of. A little bit. Kind of. 30. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter, Rob Black Show, YouTube, Rob Black Show. Butterball. 20% um, of Americans expect to be l alone on Thanksgiving. Interesting, right? It's too many people. Uh, when I first moved to California, people didn't invite me for Thanksgiving. Try to invite a friend if you can. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. Think you're in good shape for retirement? Find out how you're really doing with the seven steps for retirement readiness. Join Rob Black and CFP Chad Burton of EP Wealth Advisors Thursday, December 7th for a live webinar you can watch from home. Chad will walk you through these seven steps to find out whether you are really ready for the retirement you want. Rob will provide timely commentary and Chad will share specific strategies for taxes, income, long-term care, safe money, investing, life goals, and more. If you have at least 500000 in investable assets and want to better gauge where your retirement stands, pass on your estate, and create tax efficiencies, this event is for you. 
the 7 Steps for Retirement Readiness webinar, Thursday, December 7th, 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. Sign up today online at robblackshow.com. Can't make it to the live webinar? Register to receive an on-demand recording after the webinar concludes. Go to robblackshow.com. Some important updates in the world of crypto currencies. Binance CEO Chengping Zhao, also known as CZ, pleaded guilty to violating U.S. anti-money laundering laws and is stepping down as CEO. His crypto exchange, the world's largest, agreed to pay $4.3 billion in fines to the United States. It's a pretty big fine. Um, but crypto got bad news on one day, and the same day they found out that Argentina elected the pro-crypto Javier Millet as its next president. Self-proclaimed anarcho-capitalist wants to shut the country's central bank and dollarized economy to curb rampant inflation. Then, on the same day, we learned that the SEC is suing Kraken, alleged the exchange paid expenses from account holding customers cash and that it operated an unregistered exchange. Regulators continue in its crypto crackdown as it argues that a lot of coins are securities and need oversight. Ford downsized their plans for a new EV battery factory in Michigan. Ford, GM, and Tesla have put tens of billions in electric investments on ice, citing slower demand and economic jitters. Citigroup cut 300 senior manager roles as part of its big restructuring in 20 years, the biggest restructuring in the past 20 years. Sent away with over 7,000 positions. And if you go to a calculator and you punch in 7,000 and you just assume everyone makes 100,000 if they're working in New York. It's actually more than that, right? You're talking about $700 million of expenses saved. Highest cost of doing business is labor. So when you see companies like Microsoft and Meta, Google announced they have job cuts or a year of efficiency, it means good things for the stocks. Usually, consultant worker runs a particular action on any stock suspension on the show. Oh. Sometimes you got to be honest and give that disclaimer that you can't always be right. Play on Wall Street with there's that phrase of past performance is not indicative of future results. It's a disclaimer. It protects us. American Airlines flight attendants and Southwest pilots are considering striking over pay raises. Unions argue the ongoing travel boom should give airlines the money to meet their asks. Those are some of the headlines today. I want to talk about my favorite animal. It is the cash cow. What is a cash cow? Um, if consumers buy a total 100 bars of soap, 30 of which are from a company, you can conclude that your company holds a 30% market share. A cash cow is something that brings in a lot of money. They have plenty of cash left over after meeting their necessary annual expenses. That's the phrase. They have... Plenty of cash left over after meeting the necessary annual expenses. Cash flow positive cash cows. By generating steady streams of income, cash cows help fund the overall growth of a company. Apple products bring in most of Apple's overall revenue. A whole show on animals and dogs and cows, right? I'm a big fan of cash cows when it comes to picking investment ideas. Cash cow is something that brings in a lot of money. They have plenty of cash left over, right? After they meet all their payroll and their capital expenditures, CapEx. Streams of income. So a couple ideas on cash cows. They don't all have to be tech companies. Some of them are. I like buying cash cows, companies that generate a lot of cash when they're down 20, 30, 40, 50%. Probably the world's favorite cash cow right now is a company called Microsoft. We'll talk about that one and how they could pay their dividend yield in a little bit more color. It helps them sustain that dividend yield, that annual expense. Free cash flow could also be, again, it's one of my favorite metrics. This is why I'm talking about it, people. It's what's left over or free from operating cash flows after deducting capital expenses and working uh, capital requirements. The stocks tend to do well over time historically. Again, not guaranteed. 
Now there's something called FCF margins, free cash flow margins. Free cash flow is a percentage of sales. It can afford to make dividend payments and acquisitions, buy back stock, reduce debt, or let the cash pile up on the balance sheet. The average operating profit for margin for the S&P 500 in last year was 12.7%. Generally, any company with 20% or greater free cash flow margin can be considered a cash cow. These tend to be the best dividend stocks. They tend to do the most buybacks. When the shares drop over time, that's that's helpful. One company that I could throw down right now that I don't talk about often on this show is Palo Alto Networks, a cybersecurity software company. That generated two point six billion in free cash flow over the last twelve months. Provided six point nine billion in in revenue. Its free cash flow worked out to about thirty seven point seven percent of its sales. It is a very prosperous cash cow. They do internet security for corporations. Um, this was a year where we saw Vegas casinos get hijacked because they didn't have enough cybersecurity. So it's a, a company that I can look to own because of their cash flow is attractive. Palo Alto Networks now has over six billion in cash and investments, eight percent of its stock market valuation. The value of cash on your balance sheet is more attractive at the end of 2023 than at the start of 2023, as the interest rate has skyrocketed up to five percent on cash you hold in money markets. Microsoft has cash cows that are software. They're not hardware. They don't need metal. They don't need batteries. They don't need to be manufactured. Some of their cash flows include cash cows include Office, Microsoft Office, LinkedIn, cloud service products, productivity and business process division. They enjoy a strong appeal with consumers, up 7% in the last quarter. That's why the stock's hitting all time highs right now. Their cash position is so well and how much cash comes in versus their operating expenses. It's very attractive. Um, I like dividends. I like buybacks. I like free cash flow. I don't know if that's in order. I don't think so. I don't know. But it's very attractive. Another cash flow company, Broadcom. They generated $17.4 in free cash flow last year. It's one of the best cash cows on the S&P 500. It's one of the cheapest stocks based on their cash flows. It's spending 4.7 billion on share buybacks on top of 1.3 billion on share awards. It's focusing about 1 billion towards debt reduction. All very attractive. Big event coming up December 7th. It's a webinar. You can sign up at robblackshow.com. Brought to you by EP Wealth. This is the Rob Black Show. Markets have had an amazing year, and we still have a month and a half, a month and a week. Year to date, the Nasdaq's up 35.7%. The SP 500's up 18.2%. Both of those returns are historically large jumbo. Problem with those returns are it's made up in primarily of seven stocks, as the SP 500 is market weighted. They're called the Magnificent Seven, Amazon, Alphabet, Tesla, Microsoft, Apple. You know the drill. A little tired today. I didn't sleep terribly well last night. Um, But the Dow is up 6%. It's an underperformer. The Dow, the SP mid-cap, and the Russell 2000 all should benefit from lower interest rates that are expected. As the Fed has over-tightened, they've raised too much on interest rates. They probably went too low, which created massive amount of inflation when they're lending money out at almost free. Banks were able to speculate. Um, So the correct way of looking at interest rates, the 10-year, is it'll find its own level. But it's gone from one extreme too low to another extreme too high. So as it drifts to its right point, somewhere a little bit lower, not a lot lower, a little bit lower, let's be, let's be conservative. That should help some of the other parts of your investment world catch up. Let's keep moving forward. Last segment, I talked about free cash flow and the importance of stock buybacks and dividends. 
um, there's something called the SP 500 dividend aristocrats. If you were to take me back in time 25 years and say, put together a portfolio, I would start with these guys. I'm a little too tech heavy right now. I've been buying Microsoft and NVIDIA and Apple. I've been talking about them on the show my whole life, my whole investment life, basically when I turn 20. And my investment life will basically last of adding stocks until I'm 60 and then managing them from 60 to 100. That's where CFP Chad Burton comes in and we're doing a free webinar. I'm talking with my bosses later today about what 2024 looks like. I never know. We're doing pretty well um, retaining clients and getting clients. So I, th I think I'll still, still be around, but you never know. I can go back 25 years. I would look at the, the and again, you can write this down, S&P 500 dividend aristocrats. Um, I don't like IBM, so I'm going to cross them off the list because I don't like their business. I love their dividend, though, and it's paid for 28 straight years. But I don't like the company. But I do like the fact that they could be a winner in AI as enterprises will need strategies. And that's kind of right up their alley. Now, again, I just wrote them off and I kind of brought them back. So it may make my list to buy later. But not right now. I'm being honest with you. Caterpillars raised their dividend for 29 straight years in a row. Um, you can't have food on the planet without Caterpillar and John Deere. You can't have roads on the planet without those two companies. I was driving on a road yesterday because I kind of took my holiday vacation uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. I still did shows, but took some downtime instead of at three o'clock in the afternoon. I took it at noon and the roads were just awful. And I'm like... How do you buy a Caterpillar? How do you buy a John Deere? Do you go to the lot and say, I want one of those? And do you drive it off? No. These are complicated projects that are expensive. But roads and farms need Caterpillars and John Deere buildings. Um, there's a thought in my head. I'm editing it because this is 2023 and can't say exactly what comes to mind. General Dynamics, they make weapons of mass destruction. They make uh, weapons that kill people. They've raised their dividend for 32 straight years. And my job is not to tell you how to invest um, morally. My job is to talk about stuff and get your brain to fire off. And ultimately, when it becomes too much for you, you may want to work with CFP Chadbert. Big event coming up December 7th. Sign up at robloxshow.com. It's a webinar. If you sign up for the webinar and miss it, you get an access to the replay. If you don't sign up for the webinar and miss it, you don't get the replay. Um, so General Dynamics stock uh, pays a dividend yield of 2.4%. Now, 2.1%. You can get way more in a money market right now. The last year, you couldn't. When I pull up a chart of General Dynamics, and I tell you, they make weapons that kill people, right? I want to begin to know how to make an aircraft carrier. They could. I wouldn't begin to know how to make an F-15, F-17. Well, I don't even know what the F we are in. If I go back to the year, you know, right around college, mid-80s, this was a cheap stock, $9. Now it's $246. They've been making weapons since I was a little boy. They'll be making weapons long after. You can take a look at what's happening in Ukraine and Russia and say, oh... Well, that's kind of a new one. That's two years old, right? And you take a look at Israel and Palestinian, and you go, oh, that's, that's just a couple months old. Um, there was something called a peacetime dividend where the stock underperforms, but not really underperforms over a 10, 20, 30 year period. So, you know, I talked about the 80s, you go to the 90s, it outperformed. Start in the year 2000 when the market was at a high. So I'm, I'm cheating. I'm, I'm making it easier for you to say, you're wrong, Rob. This was a $26 stock in the year 2000. You flash ahead 10 years and it was a $62 stock. You flash ahead from $62 in 2010 and you get to 2020 and it's $149. There's no 10 year period where this is underperformed. And now it's in the last five years, four years, I guess, since we're at 2023, 2024, it's gone from 149 to 245. Short term expensive. Everyone knows about it. Long term 
cheap. It's a winner. 20 times PE pays a dividend in the years that it doesn't outperform. Um, again, do I want you to buy weapons that kill people? You know, on my list is Philip Morris and my dad died of cancer. My job is not to be socially responsible. My job is to help you get to retirement and then you can give all your money to any social cause you want to. Did you see the sphere yesterday in Las Vegas? It's pretty cool. Last weekend at the F1, they had kind of a giant eyeball that was following the drivers or it looked like it was following the drivers. This is a giant smiley face with two eyeballs that would move around the track. Uh, yesterday, it was a pizza. All day long, it was a pizza. Well, not all day long, from 530 to 930, prime time, nighttime kind of thing. Why was it a pizza, you ask? It was for Pizza Hut's $7 deal lover's menu. Now, I don't think that you could look at the sphere and say, I don't think you could look at the, the picture of a pizza and it's a big pizza advertisement ultimately, right? That's how they're making money. Um, I'm talking about it because it's cool to look at. Um, long story short, it's... um. It's a real new way to advertise. The mayor of London, he doesn't want it to come to London because he thinks it's too much um, pollution of the, the skyline, too much pollution of, of light. I kind of agree. Um, I love stories like this. 38-year-old woman pays $792 to live in an RV in Austin. Um, I get it. Life is expensive and you have to figure out your ways to um get to wealth so you can live from 60 to 100. i've got an older brother who's 60 he's probably 62 61 and he's taken some of my mother's inheritance from last year and he's touring europe right now i don't blame him he'll be dead in 20 30 years i'm one of those people that i'm more about the living than i am the dead my mom and dad are both dead and my spouse is like, aren't you upset on things? I'm like, no, I get to spend it with you and my, my two boys and your family. And like, no, I, I care more about the living than the dead. Have that conversation. Cause she's like, she's sad because she had a family member pass when she was younger and she wants to see him again. I'm like, don't you, we all approach life differently. So anyway, I love stories when you see someone who's making $58,000 living in an RV and spending, you know, um, as little as possible on housing. If I were to go back in time, cutting costs would be probably my major initiative. Starting investing earlier, cutting costs, absolutely. Um, so I love stories like that. You know what's a little bit of a surpriser to me? Dinks. Sounds like a political term. It's not. Dual income, no kids. Childless, childless couples in the U.S. could soon hit 50%, and these um, some states are better for that than others. The thing I don't like about Dinks is they're not making kids that become taxpayers, which will support my Social Security. And if we don't have those kids getting jobs in 20 years, then my retirement in 20 years, politicians may say, you know, we're cutting your benefits. I'm not really being serious about me. But there is something to be said for where did I hear it recently? It was a horrible quote, a horrible quote. Where someone accused women of, if you don't at least have one child, you're you're being bad to society. I don't think it's your business, but the mathematics of it that does say we need taxpayers. One. Uh, but anyway, there's a lot of, uh, if we're going to be 50% dinks, childless couples. Uh, there's really good states where you can live quality life for that. Uh, again, that's not me. I'm on the hard working, make money for my kids to go to college world. Um, but it's funny because I look at where am I going to retire? And then I'm like, where are dinks going to live without children? We all approach things differently is what I try to get at in this segment. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. I'm Rob Black. Big event coming up December 7th. It's a webinar on retirement readiness. You can learn more about it at robblackshow.com. It's robblackshow.com. Sign up today. It's free. And if you sign up, you get access to the replay. If you don't sign up, I can't get you access to it, unfortunately. You can sign up at Rob Black Show. 
Com. What's the best way to choose a financial advisor? Download our guide at robblack.com. That's robblack.com. Powered by EP Wealth. Butterball turkeys account for one in three turkeys served at Thanksgiving. I find that funny. I don't know why. Not the biggest fan of turkey, but I'm not going to bash it on the day before Turkey Day or the weekend of Turkey Day or the leftovers of Turkey Day. I like that Butterball has come out with an app to help you find friends. Um, I've got my son has a friend from school. His parents got divorced, so she's hanging out with her son on Thanksgiving. And we're like, come on over. It's not going to be my favorite thing because I'm not very social. But there'll be plenty of food. And if my kid gets a, a, a laugh out of a little friend's giving, I think it's a good thing. And I hated the early 2000s because I moved from the East Coast to the West Coast. And no, I was typically uh, doing Thanksgiving in the city at a, like a Chinese restaurant because no one from work would invite me over. Um, I know, I know, I know. We don't got to get sad about it, but it is what it is. Um, the start of Thanksgiving week in the holiday season, there's plenty of excellent bottles of small batch out there. This has been an interesting year for wine and beer. Um, just sticking with a scotch idea, one bottle of scotch just fetched $2.7 million. That's a record for a bottle of wine or spirits. It was purchased from an auction house rather than a liquor store, of course. Uh, it was from a liquor store. It was like a Bevo and you had a loyalty card. You get all the points in the world, right? I don't have $2.7 million to spend on turkey or on scotch. Excuse me. That's probably the better way of saying it. Um, I'll spend my money elsewhere for sure. Other stories to hit. I want to hit NVIDIA just a bit. Not hard, not mean, but just a bit. I think it's, um, it's well known that I own the stock, so keep that in mind. I don't want you to go out and buy the stock because I own the stock. I own Microsoft. I own Apple. I own Meta. Um, and I've talked about them for years on the show because they're so big and they generate so much cash, which I talked about earlier in the show about free cash flow. Chipmaker NVIDIA's earnings uh, were highly anticipated. The stock's trading down today. Not much. Still going to be the biggest winner of the Magnificent Seven this year. I, unless something really goes different in December. Company reported earnings per share of eighteen point one two billion in revenue. Their earnings per share came in at four dollars and two cents. Expected was three dollars and thirty seven. They beat revenue expectations by two billion dollars in a ninety day period. That blows my mind. Their data center revenue was up two hundred seventy nine percent year over year to fourteen point five billion. Analysts expected twelve point nine seven billion. That's a blowout. It's gaming segment. I'm loyal to NVIDIA graphic cards because in the 1990s, uh, Christopher Knight from the Brady Bunch was on the board of directors of NVIDIA and he came to my radio station and gave me a two hour interview where he talked everything Brady and everything NVIDIA and how NVIDIA powered video games like Doom and Quake. So I've been loyal to that company since. All it takes a little Brady Bunch and a little, uh, he actually gave me a free card, which I had to clear through my bosses at the time, make sure it wasn't payola. Um, and it wasn't. So gaming revenue rose 81%. And that's a small part of their business, $2.8 billion. Again, their data center was $12.9 billion. But its professional visualization segment grew 108%. My son in ninth grade, he uses NVIDIA software to make video games as part of his computer science class. Um, he'll be using that for years and years and years because of the loyalty of knowing the product. CEO Jensen Hong um, of Tor Course talked about AI, but he said his quote, and I think this is a good one to repeat, our strong growth reflects the broad industry platform transition from general purpose to accelerated computing and generative AI. NVIDIA's GPUs, CPUs, networking, AI foundry services 
NVIDIA AI enterprise software and all the growth engines are hitting full throttle. It's not just an AI chip company. He ends that quote with the era of, gener the era of generative AI is taking off. NVIDIA expects revenue of 20 billion in the fourth quarter, um, implying a 231% year over year growth rate. I believe it's got another two to three years, uh, but I'll, I'll be conservative and say, we can check back in on this one. It's a buy and hold in a year. I do worry about how they're going to be able to stay on the cutting edge because the cutting edge cuts. It's, it's the razor sharp part. They have to keep coming up with product. Their outlook, um, nothing to decline right now. Their only big problem is Asia, and not Asia, but China. So pretty good quarter. Pretty good quarter. Um, this is a year that I think we're going to look back on and say Las Vegas is dominating sports. I'd like to find a way to invest more in Vegas if I could. Formula One, the Golden Knights of the NHL, the, getting the Oakland A's. They already have the Las Vegas Aces, women's WNBA team. They're getting an NBA tournament that they're going to host every year. Um, significant infrastructure implications. So maybe the investment there is John Deere and Caterpillar. Probably not. But it is interesting to see how they're looking to dominate sports and how what a year they've had. Apple has delayed their Vision Pro two months. Um, the technology is going to be pretty fantastic. And I'll say this, I, I think Meta has a pretty good product on their hands with um, the Quest 3. So having played with it, it's pretty impressive. Now, you know that that costs $500 and Apple's coming out with a version of it that's going to cost $3,500. But I think the two of them have, are onto something as far as expensive toys. You know, we used to look at computers as expensive toys. And then we looked at phones as expensive toys. I think 2024 is going to be a good year for Meta and for Apple, as both of them have virtual reality products. Ten. They're quite miraculous in their in their functionality. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. I'm Rob Black. Big event coming up December 7th. Sign up at RobBlackShow.com. Think you're in good shape for retirement? Find out how you're really doing with the seven steps for retirement readiness. Join Rob Black and CFP Chad Burton of EP Wealth Advisors Thursday, December 7th for a live webinar you can watch from home. Chad will walk you through these seven steps to find out whether you are really ready for the retirement you want. Rob will provide timely commentary and Chad will share specific strategies for taxes, income, long-term care, safe money, investing, life goals, and more. If you have at least 500000 in investable assets and want to better gauge where your retirement stands, pass on your estate, and create tax efficiencies, this event is for you. The 7 Steps for Retirement Readiness Webinar, Thursday, December 7th, 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. Sign up today online at robblackshow.com. Can't make it to the live webinar? Register to receive an on-demand recording after the webinar concludes. Go to robblackshow.com.